What's up, everybody? It's your girl D here with 8th House Energy here to bring you a collective reading. Just going to pull some cards and see what comes out. All right? So let's see what's up for the collective. This is general. So take what resonates, leave the rest. All right? If this is not your reading, don't worry about it. Don't worry your pretty head about it. Don't do it. Uh, there's a variety of readings offered on the channel, so check those out. If you need a personal reading where you just want me to check in with your energy directly or specifically, my information is in the box below. Let's see what the current situation is with the collective. What's going on? What can you tell me about the collective? Oh, hold on, you guys. Hold on. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so let's see what we got going on. What does the collective need to hear? What messages? What's the current situation? Okay, for some of you, you're going through rejection right now. All right, it says this rejection is actually divine protection. So what I feel like what's going on with this rejection energy is for some of you, some of somebody may have left you. Somebody may have left you as in you guys broke up and they stepped off. Or you broke up, uh, you guys broke up and you stepped off. Uh, you may have ghosted someone, someone may have ghosted you. <clears throat> But the result is, is that this rejection that you're feeling uh, based on the connection being over is divine protection. Okay. Uh, some of you may not see it that way. Uh, some of you need to hear this message because you didn't see it that way. Some of you were stressed out because this person maybe left you without any closure. And speaking of closure, I just want to tap on this. I was, you know, I, I sometimes tap into a lot of worldly things. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I have guilty worldly pleasures. Um, and so one of my guilty worldly pleasures is uh, I like to check out the um, Love and Hip Hop uh, show. So I was watching that yesterday and I saw that, uh, what's her name? Sierra was talking about she needed to uh, get closure. Um you know, or give the guy she was dealing with that she broke up closure. And I didn't, I didn't think that was a positive message because you don't need to give anybody closure or you don't need closure. If somebody ghosts you or you break up on, on a, you know, whatever, and you guys go your separate way, don't feel obligated to have to speak to this person to have a, a final conversation if you don't feel called to. As in, don't give someone power over you feeling like, okay, well, we didn't have a proper breakup so I need closure. So I can't move on without closure. No, that's you giving your power to this person and you saying that, okay, until I speak to this person again, I can't move on. You can take power and control over your situation and say, you know what? I don't need closure. I know what went down. I, I know what I experienced. I know what I felt. I don't need closure. I know that this situation is not for me and I choose to move on. So you don't have to put yourself in a position where you feel like, oh, the only way I can move on is if I speak to him one last time or I speak to her one last time. Because what happened was when she went to get the closure from the dude, they ended up arguing anyway and she just stepped off. It's like, what kind of closure did you need? Like that was pointless. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it is. Some people just, you know, they use that as an excuse because they're afraid to let go. So you don't need to relinquish your power to anyone. You hear them sirens going off while I'm talking? You don't need to relinquish your power to anyone talking about, oh, well, I can't, I need closure. Or I'm sure they need closure. So I'll read, no, just go on about your business. Don't give anybody your power. You don't need closure from anybody to move on. You do not. And don't let people brainwash you into thinking that you do. You just need to make up your mind and say, you know what, I'm done. And move on. Now, what's the challenge in the situation? I, I had to put that out there because I remember hearing that. And I'm like, you know, all the people that watch this. And you got people thinking that they can't let go of a situation unless they go and harass somebody for the last time. And then when you go and harass this person, y'all don't do nothing but fight anyway or argue anyway. Where was the closure? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it just doesn't make sense in some situations. They didn't have no kids together, so they didn't have to, you know, you know, please. All right, what's the, what's the current situation? I had to tell you guys that because I feel that's very important that you don't relinquish your power to anyone. So the, the, the challenge is, is that this is a past life love. So this is why the connection may be so intense for you all. Your soul remembers this uh, intense connection. So this is my, why, might be why it's so difficult for you to accept the um, rejection or the fact that this relationship is over. But what I try to focus on when I talk to uh, the people in the 8th house community is I try to get you to look at things from more of a, a universal or spiritual perspective. 
Because if you understand things from a universal or spiritual perspective, it sometimes can help to cushion the pain. Okay, the pain is going to come regardless because you're here to experience. But if you understand the purpose of the of why these things go down, then it might be easier for you to let go and it might be easier for you to heal and move on. Um, when you came down here in your human form, you were came down here in a human form because you were supposed to experience some things on this level. You were supposed to run into this person. Uh, uh, in the in the three D realm, you were supposed to run into them, but they came into your life to teach you a lesson, and so the lesson was that you know you were supposed to learn what you were supposed to learn, and then let the relationship go. Well, the lesson was learned because you and this person are no longer together. But the reason why it was so difficult for you to let go or why it could still be so difficult for you to let go is because you knew this person in the past life. Some of you were soulmates in the past life. Some of you, this was your divine masculine or feminine in the past life. So this is why the connection is so difficult for you to let go or why you couldn't understand there was an attraction there, but yet you couldn't work things out because the lesson has been learned. So once the lesson is learned, the relationship falls apart. And no matter what you do to try to keep it, It'll just fall apart. So if you understand that from a universal perspective, that might help you to, to understand, okay, well, this relationship is no more. There was a lesson I was supposed to get from this. Let me focus on the lesson instead of focusing on being the victim. Oh, this person did me dirty. They did this to me. They did that to me. Yeah, that's how you look at it from a 3D sense because those things did happen. But from a universal perspective, what was this person reflecting back to you? Weren't there some red flags you saw? Did you ignore those red flags? Now, why did you ignore them? That's what you want to look at. Don't look at, well, they did this to me. They was out here doing this. No. Look at the red flags. And if you didn't see them, ask yourself why you didn't see them. Like, you have to, we have to take responsibility for why we allow people to do the things that they do to us. Part of it is our responsibility. Okay? What do your spirit guides and, and guardian angels and ancestors want you to uh, pay attention to or look at? Or understand based on this connection. What do they want you to know? What do they want you to know? This is what they want you to know, boo. Okay? This is what they want you to know. They want you to release this. They want you to accept it. They want you to accept it because from a universal perspective, like I just said to you, there was lessons that you were supposed to learn. This person was reflecting back to you something in you. So if I met you, right, and you're a guy because I date men, strictly. If I met a guy and I um, came to him as a karmic, right, because we all are a karmic in somebody's life at some point in this 3D life, okay, there is nobody who's just born a karmic, I don't believe, where everybody's life that they go to, they just, you know, teach this person a lesson. The, I, I could get into that, but I won't right now. I digress with that. But the thing is, is that um, when someone comes into your life and they're to teach you a lesson, whatever they do, whoever's around you, they're going to reflect back to you something within you. So if I'm if I'm dating a guy and I'm just asking for money all the time and I don't spend any time with him or if he wants to be intimate I'm like, "Well, I need a couple dollars to pay my rent." Or, you know, I'm stressed out, I'm not in the mood for sex, I'm stressed cuz I ain't got no money to pay my bills and you know, he always comes through when I ask him and then, you know, I don't really spend no time with him. I don't really connect with him on an emotional level. If he continues to allow that to happen, that's a reflection of him not thinking highly of himself. Because he's still allowing me in his life to do this. Okay? So, say I cut him off. And he gets mad and is like, oh, she did this to me. She took my money. She didn't care about me. Da, da, da. What he's supposed to be looking at from a universal perspective is, why did I allow her to continue to treat me that way? There were red flags. Every time I wanted to get intimate with her or connect with her, she would always bring up money. Or she would always do whatever. Or whatever the situation is with you and your person. You got to really look at what's going on for you to learn the lesson. Once you learn the lesson, you won't ever have to repeat it again with somebody else. This is why a lot of people sometimes will keep running into the same type of energy. 
they get out of one relationship and they run right into the next one. And the, the, the person is totally different, may even look different, but they act the same. And so that's when you get those people who don't understand it and they'll get into all these relationships and then they'll be like, oh, all men are the same. All women are the same. Y'all all do blah, 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 blah. That's a prime example of somebody who did not look at their part that they played in the connections that they were in. Because if everybody is acting the same towards you, what is the common denominator, my friend? It's simple math, baby. It's simple math. Now, where's your head at in this situation? Where's your head at in this situation? Time apart will bring distance. Uh, time apart, some distance will bring clarity. Excuse me. So, a lot of times, what happens is we're we're in the midst of a tumultuous relationship when things ain't going right, and we just like ready to pull our hair out, or we're ready to get violent. That's when you know it's time for you to take a step back when you can't figure it out and you you know this person every time you talk to them they give you they leave you seething mad or you know you can't connect with this person the communication between you two you speak two totally different languages is basically if you step away from the connection and just back off from a minute you'll start to see Especially when you, you know, look at it from a universal perspective. Okay, we're not getting along. We're not communicating right. This has been going on for over a year now. What is it that I don't understand? I need to separate from this person so I can see clearly. And once you separate from a relationship, a lot of times we don't even really see the clarity in the situation and what was going on until we play it back in our head like a movie. And then it's like, ah, I get it now. But you have to, a lot of times you have to come out of the situation in order to really see it from a three a 360 degree perspective. What I do in my mind is when I come out of a connection or something, or I get away from a person for a minute, I reflect back. But what I, what I do is like, I'm looking at it like I'm watching TV. I even turn to, I don't even listen, even listen to what was said. I just look at the mannerisms and the actions of the people who are around me. I look at what they did, how they moved based on what they said and a lot of times their their communication was totally different than their actions and so I wasn't seeing it at that time because I might have been infatuated with this person I thought they were so sexy or I didn't want to be alone or somebody was showing me some attention or you know I know that bitch wanted him but I wasn't I, you know I didn't care I'm gonna still deal with him anyway she gonna have to do what she do she got to wait her time come when when he go be with her like whatever those mentalities are you know, you will reflect and you'll see that, you know, there was something that you could have done differently. There were red flags. What's the outcome here in this situation? What's the outcome for the 8th House Energy Collective in this situation? Addictions. And addiction is affecting this relationship. So for some of you, the reason you and this person could not connect is because somebody's suffering from some type of... Um, 3D addiction could be drugs, could be alcohol, could be gambling, could be porn, could be uh, overeating, overindulging, uh, could be attention whore. It could be anything. OK, um, and it could be that somebody's addicted to attention. Somebody may not be somebody may be afraid to be alone. They may be afraid to be alone. And so, you know, they're addicted to having someone around. So that could have been the case as well. Overall energy, forgiveness. Forgiving yourself or another will help you move forward. Now, when I talk about forgiveness, I don't mean you going to get closure from this person and saying, hey, I forgive you. for what. That's not what I'm talking about at all. That's again, that's relinquishing your power to someone. No one has that control over you. Okay. Take control of your situation and your mind and your, your thoughts and your actions and move on. Forgiveness means looking at your part that you played in the situation. Like I was just explaining earlier, what did you not notice? Or what did you ignore because you wanted your way so bad? What did you ignore? That's the shadow work. That's what shadow work is. It's like, okay, what part did I play? What could I have done differently? And once you could sit down and have that heart to heart with yourself, 
then at that point, you'll start healing. You'll start getting over these people. A lot of people will say, well, damn, how do I get over my ex? Am I ever going to get over my ex? Will I ever get over this person? You get over them when you stop looking at it as you being the victim and you start looking at it instead as if, okay, there were red flags that went on in this connection. Let me focus on those red flags and the time that I ignored my intuition when I knew I should have did this or I knew I should have did that or at a point when this person really made me angry. After they made me angry, what did I do? Did I take them back? Why did I take them back? Ask yourself why you behaved in the way you did. Because if you don't understand why you behaved in the way you did, who's to say that you won't behave that way again? This is all about understanding who you are and taking control of yourself and having power over yourself. And once you know what that is, then you can say, you know what? I understand that I did that. I, I, I had low self-esteem. I was lonely. I was desperate. I was horny. You know, I was drinking. Whatever your situation was. I was dealing with some unresolved issues from childhood. And as a result, I'm clingy. I'm codependent. I forgive myself for being that way. I forgive myself for allowing this person to treat me that way. I forgive myself for allowing me to allow this person to treat me this way repeatedly. I forgive myself for that. I know better now because I know why I did it. And now that I know better, I can forgive myself. And as a result of me looking at things from a spiritual level, I know this person was here to reflect to me what I needed to change. And as a result, I'm not mad at them no more. What they did was wrong, but I understand that they were reflecting to me something that I needed to work on in myself. And as a result, I understand their purpose in my life. And I forgive them. I don't condone what they did, and I ain't letting their asses back in, but I understand now. So I can forgive me for, you know, allowing that to go down and I can forgive them for, you know, doing me dirty. And as a result, it will help you move forward. Okay, that's basically what the deal is. That's basically what it is. All right, so let's get another reading. Let's see what else we got for you guys. We'll see what else comes out. Maybe I do another deck. Let's do another deck, a different deck. All right, what we got for the collective? I hope you guys are doing okay. You know, fireworks and all that stuff are over. I was looking at the news. A couple places, it was crazy. Shout out to you all in Chicago. Um, sorry for the loss. Uh, where else was it? It was a couple other places. Um, I was watching the news. It said 150 people across the United States got killed. Fourth of July. With all of everything that was going on. There were shootings. Like, the the energy is crazy. We got to be careful out here. Neptune retrograde is no joke. Pluto retrograde is no joke. Saturn retrograde is no joke. All of these planets are in retrograde right now. And you see what's going down, right? This is why I do these um, retrograde readings for you guys. So that you can see what's up. So that, you know, you can know how to maneuver out here. And don't get, you know, caught up in the world without knowing what's going on. So we have Nightingale Spirit. It says love is all around you, but it came out in reverse. So for some of you, you're, um, this is like I get a codependent energy. I get that somebody is codependent and that they um, don't believe, either they don't believe that they deserve love. So this is why they may let people come in and um, instead of them saying, hey, I don't deserve the way you're treating me, I'm, I'm cutting you off. Are you kidding me? Instead of that, they let people stick around because they feel like, okay, well, this is the only person I'm going to get or this is the best I'm going to get, you know? And so with love all around in reverse, you have to understand that, you know, you have to love yourself first because when you love yourself and then someone comes to you and they give you a behavior and you say, no, that's not me, then the universe says, okay, you don't want that, so I won't send that back to you, Um. Or if you, you know, this person comes to you and they behave terribly and you accept them and receive them, the universe is going to say, oh, okay, I see you like that because you keep letting this person come back. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you more of what you like. So this person keeps coming back doing you dirty, right? And for some of you, it's because you're afraid to be alone. You're afraid to be alone. You're afraid that you're not going to find anybody else. You know, there's billions of people on the planet. Are you kidding me? There are billions of people on the planet. Now, in this day and age, more than ever, you can connect with people all over the world. They can see your face. You can see theirs. There is absolutely no reason 
why you can't find somebody if you truly want to find someone. You do not have to deal with someone's bullshit if they are not treating you right. Okay? Understand that love is all around you. There are people all over the place who want love. It's just, okay, well, you know, are they healed? Are you healed? Are you really ready for it? If not, figure out what you need to do to get ready for it. You know, uh, the number 41, 4 plus 1 is 5. The number 5 major arcana is uh, the, uh, imper I'm sorry, the hierophant energy. Okay? The hierophant energy, to me, when it's upright, it represents you tapping into your higher self. You connecting with your higher self. Self-love. Because when you connect with your higher self, you love yourself. So for some of you, you were acting in your lower level natures because it came out in reverse. You were acting out of lust, greed, uh, codependent energy. And so as a result of that, you know, there wasn't love around you. It wasn't. It was everything else. Greed, lust, you know, um, loneliness, desperateness, all of that. The challenge in the situation, it says a rebirth is assured. Yeah, so... With the rebirth being assured in reverse, what this is saying is that, um, you know, you didn't believe that there was love around you because you weren't willing to change the way that you thought. A rebirth talks about a change. It talks about ascension. Remember with the Hierophant energy here with the number five. All right. So if the Hierophant is in reverse, instead of the Hierophant being up, right, and you're acting in your higher nature, it's in reverse and you're acting in your lower level nature. Meaning that, you know, the Hierophant deals with the five senses. The touch, taste, smell, hear, you know, the five senses, right? And so you were in your physical pleasures because the Hierophant is ruled, is Taurus, is ruled by Venus. It was in, you know, Venus is, Taurus is the feminine version of Venus, all right? Libra is the masculine version of Venus. So you were in your Taurus energy, Right. You were in your emotions and your feelings. So you were feeding those uh, worldly pleasures. All right. And so for some of you, it was you were in your lust. Yeah. And so when the rebirth is in short and reverse, it's because you have to change your mindset and your thought process. That's the issue. Again, we get another number five. OK, you were in your lower level natures. What's your spirit guys want you to know? What do they want you to know? A lot of you right now are just in reflection, in reference to coming out of a lot of karmic uh, or tumultuous and or relationships. And so you're in a healing process right now. And so this is a message that the universe is putting out to you because they want you to understand what you're supposed to get out of, out of this uh, situation that you were in. Now the card that dropped out said, be peace in reverse. This is what your spirit guides, guardian angels, and ancestors want you to know. Now... Be peace. It came out in reverse. Some of you are angry. Some of you are frustrated. Some of you may feel like you want to retaliate because of some of the things that you were done. Some people may want to retaliate against you. But what I feel like is more so is your, your feelings here. Okay. Uh, two plus one is the number three, which is the Empress energy. The feminine energies represent your emotions and feelings. The feminine energy of uh, the Empress is uh, Venus energy. So we're still dealing with Venus. All right. And we're dealing with the, uh, em the, the feminine energy of uh, Empress energy. So with that being said, Empress is ruled by uh, Venus, right? And so is Taurus. <laughs> Interesting. So we're dealing with love. Love relationships, the self-love. And your love for others. And, you know, for some of you, you were loving others more than yourself or you were loving the physicality of the connection more than the, uh, they were, that, that's all there was. It was physical lust. Okay, because Venus does what deals with indulgences and she deals with lust. So be peace. Your soul is not at peace. That's what the universe is telling you. You acting in this manner and acting in your lower level energies, your soul is not at peace. Okay, so this is like the Empress energy in reverse. There's no growth within you. There's no growth because you're stagnant because you're focusing on lower level desires. So you're not able to grow and be abundant. A lot of you, because of the people you were dealing with, your financial situations are suffering. Especially my earth signs. If you're around people that ain't good for you 
and uh, or you were your mentality is not in the best uh, place that it could be, it, you will suffer financially. Where's your head at right now? Where's your head at right now? Let's see what's going on. Cat spirit came out in reverse. Claim your independence came out in reverse. So where your head is at right now is you're still mentally trapped in that mind state that you were in. Some of you are trapped in your lower level desires. You're still trapped in the physicality of the encounters that you're getting into. Um, some of you could be dealing with the demon's uh, energy, succubus uh, energy, succubus incubus energy. Okay? And so your soul is not at peace because some of you may have been inhibited by these energies. Um, so you may need to do some type of cleanse, a spiritual cleanse. Um, I just got, this is something I do every once in a while. I just got this. It's interesting. Okay. For some of you, you know, if you're dealing with demon energy, okay. Um, you may have dealt with somebody who was doing some type of spell work on you. Um, some type of, uh, uh, uh sex magic or something like that. You can get rompe sagwe, right? R-O-M-P-E. And that's how it's spelled. And what, you, and what this is, is some herbs. So what you do is you boil the herbs in hot water. You boil it until it gets hot. And then once it cool, let it cool down. And then you separate the herbs out of that water. You take that water um, and you stir it with your left hand. And you ask to remove any uh, hexes, spells, curses, black magic, voodoo, or witchcraft. Remove it from your energy and return it to the sender. Right? You take a little bit of spit. You know, from your mouth, and you put it in, and you that that activates it, and you just stir with your left hand. Ask your creator, your spirit guides, your benevolent ancestors, benevolent guardian angels, uh, to remove any negative energy in the form of witchcraft, voodoo, hexes, spells, curses, or black magic from your energy, from your aura. Return it to sender, uh, and just keep repeating that. Close your eyes, um, stir it for a few times. You know, be somewhere quiet, and then pour it on your body from your neck down. Dress in white. When you go to bed and sleep in white, all white sheets, you know, if you use blankets or pillows, all white blankets, pillows, sheets. All right. Do that. And then there's a white bath you can do every week uh, to keep negative energy from you. Check out the um, 2021 collective uh, reading uh, playlist and look for the video where I talk about the rant that I did on um, black magic because if you look in the description box of that video you will see the ingredients for the white bath all right so claim your independence some of you are not claiming your independence from this energy this is why your soul is not at peace okay so you're not you're, you're stuck because if you see the number 13 that's the death card right so that means you're stuck it came out in reverse you're stuck you can't move on this energy is is permeating through you so do those things and that'll help to clear that energy up. And do not continue to sleep with this person. What's the outcome here? Where are we at with the time? Okay. Outcome. Mm-hmm. Surrender. Surrender those um, desires. For some of you, once you cleanse yourself and you take spiritual baths weekly... This energy will purge from you. Now, you may have to do it. Um, the white baths, you may have to do them for a while, right? Um, but you will eventually, you know, clear yourself up. And you should do them weekly, you know? Um, that way it'll help to keep any energy that anybody is sending to you. It'll help to keep it off you, to bounce it off you. But you also have to vibrate on a, high vib on a higher level as well. You know, um, you need to cut back the alcohol intake that you're taking in. Okay, any drugs that you're doing, you need to cut back on that. Okay, because that lowers your vibration. Alcohol definitely lowers your vibration. So for some of you, if you're drinking a lot and you're out here being promiscuous, you could that makes you open, that makes you an open portal to incubus succubus energy, which makes you lust all the time, which makes you un, your your appetite insatiable, which puts you in a position where you're sleeping around with a lot of people, men and women. OK, so if you know that this is what's going on and you're like, damn, why can't I control myself? I'm horny all the time. I can't help it. Da, 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 da. You may have been inhibited by, um, you know, a succubus incubus energy. And this is what you need to do to cleanse yourself. Well, this is what you can do to start. OK, so that's what I got for you guys. Um, let's get you some advice. <laughs> let's see. What advice do we have for the collective? 
oh and this is just a spell breaker so you know if you want to do this like I'll do this like um I mean you you don't need to do this every week um you can do this like if you're actively you know trying to cleanse yourself off you can do this once a month if you want to on the um full moon uh, I would recommend doing it on the full moon because the full moon is where you can release negative energies that would make it even more potent. So save it, you know, order it and have it for the full moon and do it on the night of the full moon. Um, actually, you can do this for three nights in a row. You um, just uh, after you boil it and you remove the uh, leaves from it after it cools down, you can put it in a container and just have it for like three nights and do it the, the three nights of the full moon. So you'll have the full some. You'll have a full moon and then you'll have it for three nights and then it'll, you know, it'll go out. So, yeah, just do it for the first three nights of the full moon, which will make it a little bit more potent. All right. So, yeah, just keep yourself clean and um, try to eat clean as well. Try to eat one ingredient foods as much as you can. So, like, you know, you have your uh, meat or your poultry or whatever you eat, um, fish, whatever, if you're not a meat eater, um, or if you don't, you know, whatever. And then just have, like, you know, some vegetables. So, like, have a, you know, a baked potato or some broccoli or, you know, some beans. You know, like, one ingredient foods. Not, like, a whole lot of processed stuff that you get from the, the you know, if you look at when you go to the grocery store, you want to shop around the perimeter of the grocery store. That's where the healthiest stuff is. All in between the aisles, if you notice and pay attention, that's where all the in health all the unhealthy stuff is. You know, except for the water. <laughs> well, you know, it depends on what's going on with the water, but some people would, you know, argue with that. But yeah, try to eat, you know, fresh vegetables. Um I put in a community tab that we did uh, uh, what a 30 day uh fast where you just ate fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, whether you're eating salad or whether you just, you know, cook some fruits, I mean, cook some vegetables and you eat maybe fish or poultry or don't eat any fish or poultry at all, but stay away from the meat. Um, and I did it for two weeks, <laughs> but um, I'm going to do it again this coming week. And, you know, you have to build yourself up. I couldn't do it for the whole 30 days. I ain't going to front. I'm human, but um, I have gifts. And um, when I was a vegetarian, I was able to astro travel. And I've not been able to do it since. And I know the last time I did it was because I wasn't eating any meat. So I'm trying to get back to that. <laughs> but it's been a long time. So just to let you know, you know, for those of you who are into um, enhancing your spiritual gifts, you know, eating a lot of one ingredient foods will help you. Let's get some advice. Advice. What does the collective need to know in reference to these situations they're in? What advice do you have for the collective? What advice? Thank you time for a nap some of you need to get your sleep because your ancestors spirit guides guardian angels talk to you and you get your messages i know i get my messages like uh, right before i wake up um once i'm coming out of the sleep but i'm still asleep but i'm coming out of that deep state and i'm in the last i don't know there's like levels to it before i wake up and i'm in that level right before i actually am consciously awake and that's when i get my messages um i'm in and, and neptune's in retrograde right now so, you know, we're all a lot more sensitive uh, psychically. And, you know, Neptune does deal with dreams, the dream state. So pay attention to your dreams, okay? Because for a lot of you, you're being communicated with that way. Yeah, because the number six, to me, you know, that's your ancestors, your spirit guides. That's karmic energy. That's just for me personally how I see it. All right, so let's see what else we got going on. The Gemini energy, the lover's energy. All right. And tick tock. So time is ticking. So, it, you know, for some of you, it may take you, you know, you may just need 30 days to cleanse yourself out. I was just talking about the 30 day fast where you eat fruits and vegetables and just fish or fruits and vegetables and, you know, fish. But just eat clean as, as clean as possible. You know what I'm saying? And you can do it at intervals. You know, we're human. So, you know, if you can only do it for two weeks and then you, you know, you eat whatever you eat again and, you know, just try it again another time. Don't beat yourself up if you can't go 30 days. We human. You know what I'm saying? We in this 3D realm. It's difficult. But you just want to build up your strength by implementing that in. At least, you know, you do it. You say, okay, well, at least two, two weeks out of the month, I got to just eat fish and vegetables. Or I just got to eat chicken and vegetables. You know, no fried foods, no carbs. Um, no desserts, no cakes, cookies, pies, none of that stuff. Just fresh fruits and vegetables for two weeks. And fr and water, no soda, none of that stuff, right? 
So uh, with the Imagine card underneath in reverse here, I feel like once you start doing that and you start doing things to clear your energy, you will be more intuitive because the Imagine card is in reverse. So some of you, your energy may be blocked because you need to do some cleansing or you need to do some baths and or, you know, some different levels of, of detox via, you know, changing your food, the type of food you eat and, and you know, doing a two-week fast I was talking to you about. So that's what I got for you guys. I hope this message uh, provided some insight for you all or for some of you. <laughs> it's not going to resonate with everybody, but please take what messages do and leave the rest. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next reading.